Okay, so <clears throat> been left a couple of hours to dry off slightly. It's still a little bit wet, but it gives us a good idea of what we can. And what I've done is I've just sanded down this edge to see if we've got any gaps, because um, obviously it's quite an important one, um, both sides, and I'm happy to report there isn't any. What I've done is that nasty one down the back, as you see that white, basically, that's just CA glue with kicker sprayed over the top. Done it to both sides. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it to the front. Now I've sanded it roughly to have a look to see what we've got. And there isn't that much of a problem. So what we're gonna do is just put a little bit more super glue or your CA glue literally along and we're just going to run it just along this edge okay now you could let that dry naturally but obviously we just speed things up with a little squirt of kicker once you've squirted it with kicker if you hang it up the other way it will draw down and make a nice rounded dome if you don't it does tend to thin the, the kicker thins the CA glue and it tends to run a little bit everywhere so if you just hold it upside down so obviously it's downwards and that way it will make a nice dome which will be easier to sand and it, and it will stop it spreading out basically so okay we just do the same on the other side it's just a little gap there's nothing much here I was thinking it was going to be worse and in previous builds that I've done it has been a lot worse so that's what I was thinking it was going to do. Um, and on this one's gone a little bit closer together. What I did is I took my time um, dry fitting um, those two parts um, together to make them really sort of, you know, work for me and get a nice join going along. And I found that the lower half was slightly a little bit longer where you get the little tooth edge there um, than obviously the top half. So by sanding it down, taking my time and fitting it, we've got it almost perfectly. You could probably get away with not actually using filler. We could sand it in and rescribe it. But for the purposes of this, um, we've actually gone with a little bit of CA filler just to take care of that. What you want to do on this join as well, I've actually put a lot more glue in the inside there um, of it um, on both sides because I was a little bit worried about, you know, obviously it's going to be a weak point on there. Um, so that's why I've done that. But we can leave those to dry off slightly like it. Now, obviously the nose is going to fit on shortly. Once we've sanded that down, we're going to put the nose on. Uh, the nose does have a little um, indentation in it, which lines up with the top. And I've already tried this and there's a small little gap running all the way around it, how you can see that there. But what I'm hoping is with a little bit of glue running around the outside, and obviously this is gonna be sprayed a different color to the rest of the model if you're doing it in the combat colors. Um, but certainly it's not a, at all a bad fit. It does go on there quite nicely. And I think by the time we've sanded it all in, um, it should be okay. So that gives you an idea of the size of the kit. It is a big kit. It's certainly bigger than um, you'll find like an F-15 or something like that. It's a big old kit, so you are gonna need some room for it. Okay, so we've done our usual. We've given it a bit of um, ac um, acrylic um, on here. Um, as you can see, the one at the front here is absolutely fine. Got no problems with that at all. That's gonna be okay. One at the back got a tiny little bit going on still where you can just about see it. So all we're gonna do is just gonna give it another coat of super glue. So we're just going to run the super glue where we can just about still see it. We can't see any of this rear area, which is good. Okay, you could let that dry naturally or just for speed. A bit of kicker, hang it upside down just so that bulges out. <clears throat> and then what we can do, we can then, as that's drying off, start on the other side. So same thing again, we just got it in here. Um, quite a coarse sanding stick just to cut through the super glue because it is going to be quite tough. Okay, we're almost through, just switching to a, a finer stick. Just like that. Okay, in with a sanding sponge. Okay, just whip around just like that. Job done. So what we do, we give that some acrylic green and we do the same to the back and we can see how those joins are looking. Okay, so we've got the air intakes here. They're basically done. There's a piece of photo etch to go inside there which will fit after they've been painted. So what we need to do now is open up the two holes on the bottom if you haven't done it already to do that. And then looking at the references, I don't think there's any particular color. So we're just gonna spray them. Uh, in this case, I'm doing it uh, XF54. Um, I was gonna go with X19 sort of a light grey, but I think this one's probably better because it'll give it a more sort of grey weathered look. 
Um, depending on which reference photos you look at, some of them seem to have like a red color, others seem to have like a gray color uh, inside them. So it's gonna be a case of check your references. And luckily I found one of this and it's showing it's being gray. Another little thing you can do now is literally just have a quick spray and you can check the seam lines all over it to make sure they're all okay, which those ones are happy to report. So once you're happy with that's all okay like that, we'll just leave that to one side and we'll do the other one. And then tipping lumps of paint in like I've just done there. Okay, we'll just do this side. And then what we can do, we can obviously mask up this lead area to see exactly what it's like. There we go, that's those done. Right, at the same time, obviously, we can do the air intake area on here. So if you just follow Also, if you give the um, fan blades a bit of a spray, obviously we'll paint them silver afterwards. It will give it something to grip to. But there we go. So we've just got it in that area there. So we can just do the same with the other side. And then whilst we've got the paint out, all we're gonna do is check those seams. So we're just gonna spray the areas where we've done some sanding and filling already to really have a look and see what they're like. Because if they look nasty now, you know, we can do that at the same time as we attach the air intakes. So anywhere where you've done some sanding, we can have a look at. So there we go. Let's just give that another light dusting in there. So we can leave that to side to one side to dry. And then we can just have a quick look around in those. They're all okay. So we'll let those dry and then we'll get the photo etch parts, uh, which are these little ones here, um, fitted into the intakes. Then we can mask them up and then I'm gonna attach them. Okay, so one of the biggest tricky parts about um, with the kit is actually fitting the air intakes on. But before we do that, what we've actually done, we've painted them silver, um, the actual fan blades, the compressor fan blades back there already. And what you actually get is a nice piece of photo etch. Now, if you haven't got it in the kit, the chances are you will have another bit. Uh, you can find the sprue, there we go. Uh, that looks like this, which is just the solid piece of plastic. If you have got the photo etch, which I think they all do come with them, um, then you can use this. What we wanna do is make a small bend in it. Um, as it shows you on the instructions, you could just literally put it on the table and bend it up. I've got some Tamiya uh, photo etch tweezers here, uh, clamp sort of bendy things, which is quite handy. So all we're gonna do, we pop them into the clamp, all right, and we're just gonna guesstimate it, and we're just gonna bend it up a touch in there. All right, so we've just got a little bend, just like so. Nothing massive. All right, then all we're gonna do is that what happens is this top edge is flat flange. If I bring you in a touch, you can see this flat flange here um, goes to the top at the back, just behind where we've got all those little stipply bits up there. So the way I found to do it is literally if we just pop it in and then if you put your finger down the back here, just after where that there's a little join, a little groove just down here, I don't know how well you can see that, just in there. All right, so all you do, slide it in. Hopefully not scratching all your nice paintwork that you've done already. Okay, and it lays in there in the closed position. Where are we? There we go, just like that down there. All right, then if you put your finger on the end, just like that, okay? Take a little bit of CA glue, all right? Just a little bit, and we just wanna put a drop, not much at all, because we don't want this squirting everywhere, along that edge of the photo etch, that little flat flange, okay? And the way I do it is literally we come along we're gonna pop a knife blade underneath the photo etch and we're gonna push it up into the up position and it goes up there just like that. Now, if you wanted to, you could pop a clamp on there and that's how I did with the first one. If you've got the bend slightly wrong and it's poking up, um, what I did on this one, I just used a spring-loaded clamp and put it on to hold that flat. That one, I must admit, has gone on absolutely perfect and is flat there onto it. 
um, but if you have got the bend and it's slowly poking up or down you can just put the clamp and it'll just hold it there in place i have put a tiny little drop on the bottom as well so what we're going to do now we're just going to leave that to one side to dry over there and then this one um, what we've done is I've sort of test fitting it by putting it on. What I actually did is also on these compressor fan blades back here, I slightly pulled it forward so the blades are actually going to act as a little groove so this slides over them which will give us the right width at the back with any luck. So what we'll do, we'll just pop along now with this one. This is the, the dry one, make sure we've got the right way around. Okay, and then when it sits on, it is the same width as the other. Now there is a, a dip because it's not the crispest molding of plastic and it's got a slight curve on it. So it is gonna need sanding and filling, but it does go on there very well. And because we haven't got those little tabs to line up here, it literally can fit anywhere you want it along. And as long as it fits just behind this little slit here, this little raised area, you want obviously the little grooves on this one that fit right on the top, just like that. So then, you can pop it into position when you're all happy of how it is. The way I'm going to do it as I am with this one, okay, I'm gonna glue around with a little bit of extra thin just to hold it all in place. And then we're gonna come back with some CA filler um, using probably a little bit of talcum powder just to blend this edge in nicely and we're gonna rescribe it afterwards. So what we'll do, we'll Pop in first with our extra thin. The thing is, if you get a, a nice join on this, you could end up with a scenario where you won't need um, to actually um, use filler. That's if you're very good and you've got a steady hand and your dry fittings work to treat, you may be able to just hopefully get away without using it. So all we're gonna do then is just gonna extra thin. Hopefully it's gonna wrap itself all around all the little joins everywhere and work its way all the way around. That's it, just like that. And then what I'm going to do is just to make sure we're all in here nice. I'm just gonna pop a clamp on this leading edge just to make sure it butts in nicely along this one here because that's the one where it's gonna be a noticeable join. So I've, it's literally pulling it slightly into there, making sure it's all in there nice and tight. Now I haven't done the inside yet. I'm gonna let this outside edge dry for a bit. Then I'm gonna slightly manipulate it to pull it out a little bit on this inside edge here. Um, Cause you can see we've got a little bit of a gap here, but I'm sure if I get in here with a, a blade knife, I can get in there enough to be able to pull it around and get it all into position. Okay, so that's the air intakes on and we're just, Give them a squirt of kicker, another squirt. I've just touched in a few little areas because um, we really want them to sort of bend in because um, there's a, you, you'd really need to do is actually canter them round. And I try, tried to dry fit it as best I could, but really it's a full filler job. You're gonna need your filler to get in there you know, to make it a nice join. This side went in particularly well, I'm quite happy with that, but this side, I must admit, was a bit of a pain. Um, so what we're going to do is hopefully um, we'll be able to sand that in and put it in all nice. But we're certainly taking the sort of flanker shape of things now. Um, so what we've got is got a few little bits to do still on these side bits because they're quite noticeable, which I want to sand and fill and take care of. So I want to get them all sorted out. We can get the nose section on as well, which I must admit is quite a nice uh, fit now. We've had a fiddle with it. Um, what I actually did, literally, nice big piece of sanding stick flat down and literally just took the nose just a little tiny bit off of the edge there just to make it all nice and square. And this one, I must admit, does fit in there very, very well now. So we won't need any filler with any luck to put in that on. That should be just a straightforward fit. Okay, so as you can see, we've got some um, super glue with the kicker. That's why it turned white, just like that. And I've already done this side and taken it off and it's not a bad join at all. So what I'll do is I'll put some green acrylic paint just over the top, just to have a look, but basically, when you're doing something like this, what you don't want to do when you're sanding away is do this business of going right on it, because what you tend to do is dig down. What you want to do is keep your, your sanding stick flush across the entire thing, but don't go off and past it. Just keep it right on top, and that way you'll take out the super glued area without much of the plastic going with it. And then when you're as you can see here, we've got like a dark line in the middle. As you see that running through there. Okay, when that literally 
turns white, just got a small amount there, um, then we know we're roughly in the right area. So what we do, we just whip this all off here. Now I'm using a very coarse um, sanding stick. This is purely for speed to show you what I mean. I wouldn't normally use one this coarse, but literally I'm trying to do this so I can show you without doing lots and lots of different editing. So I'm going to make a bit of a mess and have to go around and rescribe it all, but I'm sure it'll be worth it in the end. Um, so here we go, we're just doing this area here. Okay, now as you might be able to see here, you can see like a shadow behind it. Well, that's obviously where it's not actually touching. So we are going to need a lot more sanding and a lot more filling by the looks of it on this particular side. We can just carry on. We can see if we can dig down into the plastic a little bit. Now what also we've got here is a lump of super glue in the back and it's quite hard to get in here so I'm going to use a knife and we're just going to cut our way in. So then we can just pop in with a pointy bit of the sanding stick just in there, that'll be like that. So if we use quite a coarse sanding sponge, as I say, this is more for speed to show you than it is how it will be. Obviously I'm gonna to have to tidy this up quite a, a lot afterwards. Same thing, keep your sanding sponge over the top of it and so you can't see it. And then that way you know it'll be working nicely in there. So there we go, we'll come back now. It might need another coat on the top. Why use super glue and not filler? Two reasons, firstly, speed. You know, obviously from my point of view, um, speed is really the essence here. So we want to work as fast as we can without having to leave it. Now, if you've got the time, you could leave this with filler, go off, do other things, perhaps do it the next evening, whichever way you're gonna do it. Um, with myself, I don't have that luxury. So literally, you just whip along and get through it as fast as we possibly can. Um, secondly, shrinkage. Obviously, if you use fillers, we spoke about in other video builds, um, give it a couple of weeks, it shrinks back slightly, you get a little dip, same way as if you're using just glue on a joint this big, you will get probably a little bit of shrinkage, um, which we don't like. So what we'll do, let's get it here as best as we can. Now, this one's not really perfect, but it'll do for just showing you for the moment. So you run your finger, and it feels smooth. I've got no gaps there um, at all. This dark shadow you can see here, what that is, is actually dirt underneath the super glue that's lying on top, but it's a nice, gentle, smooth one there. So what we'll do, we'll come along with some green acrylic paint. Now, as I say, this isn't Mr. Surface, a mix I made up in previous shows. This is just normal acrylic green paint. All we'll do, we're gonna paint this over the join. And as you can probably see there, it's a pretty good join because we've got no visible mark where you can actually see a dent or a gap in there like that. So if we just do the other one as well. Just around like that. So there we go, that's those two done. Now I've got a slight little crack appeared on the front of this intake up here, which I'm gonna take care of as well. So we're gonna do the same thing, tiny drop of Super glue along the edge. Okay, and then what we'll do, we'll get a cocktail stick to smooth it out a little bit. So it has time to work into any gaps like that. And then we'll give it a bit of a squirt with the kicker. Just to get that all moving. So we'll leave that aside now to one side just to let that all dry in and then we can come back. Now I should think that's gonna take me probably two um, goes uh, to get that seam looking nice down the back there because as I say, it's one of those important ones. It's the same as when we did the Tomcat build. Very, very noticeable area. Um, I know it's underneath, but it is a big join. So we wanna take care of that as best as we can. So literally, it's gonna be well worth it with the extra effort we'll put into making that right. What we could possibly do on the next pass, instead of actually coming back with super glue, we could use um, a little bit of the Mr. Surface, the homemade stuff we made up was just adding thinners to a little bit of, um, uh, selling those thinners to a little bit of squadron green putty. Just to put that on, take care of any little nicks, bumps, and lumps. Um, 
as I say, we've got the uh, the one up here on the nose area. That's all fine. I'm I'm, not, I'm totally happy with them. Um, there's just a tiny little line running through, which is going to be a panel line, um, and that's absolutely fine. So we're all happy with that one. Okay, what we've just done in there, um, just down inside this area, uh, the wheel well here, you get a little bit of plastic poking out. What I've done is just whip in there with a Dremel. Um, okay, so remember, if you're using a Dremel on plastic, nice slow um, revolutions with it, RPMs, otherwise you'll end up melting your way um, completely through. So we just give that a bit of a clean up. Get all the bits of melted, shredded plastic out. Um, it's a quick way of doing it. The other way you can do it, of course, is also use it as a template, push it down, draw a line, and then cut it out manually. But that's just me being um, very clever and just doing it straight away with the Dremel. Okay, so we're just gonna carry on now. Sanding. Obviously we've got a little gap. I wasn't happy with, just on this one here. Then obviously we've got to do these big lines um, down the back. Remember, secret of filler is let it dry. Um, if you end up doing it sanding too soon, you end up pulling the filler out of the actual joint itself. Okay, so as you can see, we've been in here and we've sanded. Now what I've done is, um, obviously we used a very coarse um, sanding um, sponges and files as well to basically get this off. So I've got a very old one here, which has really had it, I suppose. Um, but it's great for polishing up because you can get in there and we can get out all those scratches and lines and various bits and pieces really to polish all this up. Now I'm really happy with those seams. You can't feel a thing there. They really do run well. Trouble is, we obviously we've obliterated all the panel lines. So what I'm gonna have to do is rescribe all of this and get them all back in. Same with the front here. Those have totally gone, but we've got to rescribe that panel line that runs diagonally down the front here, um, just like that, and get those done. In the meantime, one thing the instructions fail to mention um, is obviously nose weight. This thing will be a tail sitter in no time at all, usual thing. Put your finger underneath where it is, so obviously like here, and see what happens when you let go and obviously it tips over backwards, no problem at all. So don't forget, by the time we've got the engines, tail planes, flaps, and certainly even the leading edges, um, they're gonna add weight to the rear. So you're gonna need a good lump of lead. Haven't measured it, but I've really almost filled it up in there, as you can see. Um, I super glue it in place, a little bit of CA kicker holds in there, and I always give it a good dollop of PVA glue. Um, and what happens is, is that I'm just hoping over time, um, if the CA glue gives up, it's not gonna rattle around the nose, and obviously the worry would be it'd fall backwards into the main intake, um, sorry, into the main um, sort of body of the aircraft and end up rattling around and becoming a tail sitter like that. The other thing also I did was make sure that um, this front edge, as I said before, get a file on there, give it a bit of a rub over to make sure that's perfectly flat and smooth and you should find if you're using the kit part nose, as you can see there, it goes together with absolutely no need for filler um, whatsoever. It's a perfect, perfect fit. Um, what I'm going to do is obviously you have it on your finger like that and you check and it's pulling down, no problem at all. So we're really happy with that. So then what we can do is we can pop that on and then we can give it a run with a bit of glue uh, around the outside just to hold that in place. And then we can move on. Next steps that we're gonna be taking care of is obviously the canopy. Um, getting that sorted out because it's got a center seam on there. Um, so we get that done and we can start getting it all together then and uh, get some primer coat on it. Okay, so I just started working on the seats. Um, if I just bring you right in, there we go. Well, you can see that. You see, all I did, a little bit of six mil Tamiya tape over on this one for the backing, because um, they tend to have like a, a sort of greeny color back on them. And then all I've literally done with this one, I've got some jammy tape and I used the one mil, started at the top to make the loop around the bottom and everything else. And then over the top, I put a little bit of um, 1.5 mil um, over the top. Uh, so you get the sort of pad padded thing because we're trying to get sort of um, this type of effect as I've done on here. So obviously the ones in the photo you can see is from a resin set um, and the ones here of not. So we're trying to sort of recreate that sort of um, thing here with the straps going down and all the rest of it. So we get this one painted up and we get the rest of this one put together. Mm. Okay, so that's both of those um, strapped up like that. Obviously I've done them different ways so you can see a bit of difference. Now for this I'm going to use a little bit of XF14 uh, which is the um, Japanese army grey I think. Um, literally this is just going to be the back colour 
So we have it just like that. And then all we're going to do is paint the back section. Um, now we don't have to be too precise at this point because obviously this is just to the the backing. And we'll take a little bit more care when we do the front part. So that's literally just going to paint this. Just do the backing colour, just like that. Just down here. That's that one. And we do the same on this one. Okay, we're going to cut them to buff, which is XF57 if you're using Tamiya. Just get it going here. Okay, then we're just going to paint the straps uh, in the buff colour. So literally, we're just going to pick them all out. With the buff, it does tend to dry a little bit lighter. But obviously, with this one, you're going to have to take a little bit more care how you do it. And obviously, I'm doing this back to front, so you can see. But you get the idea, so we're going to be sort of painting the straps up like this. And there we go, a um, couple of the seats all done. Basically, I've just got a tiny little bit of um, um, dark uh, Pro Models wash right the way over the top, just to tone the belts down. And also it causes a little bit of shadowing um, between the layers of the belts, which is quite good. A little bit of silver on the little poles, which come out each side of the, the head box there, which basically holds your head in place as you being ejected out. Um, just to go on is the pull handles. Uh, the ones that come in the kit, uh, these little ones uh, just here. Um, they're not too bad. Uh, you could always replace them with a little bit of lead wire that's hooped over, um, which is the way I'm going to do it. Very simple, literally just going to pull it round um, and just make a little loop out of them uh, because they tend to be more sort of loopy shaped um, as we did in the photo uh, than they actually are sort of square handles like that. So that's the only difference going to do there.